All right, shaholics. Well, out with the old and in with the new. So uh, welcome back to another episode. What we got going on for today's video is uh, I'm gonna be fishing all day on the Fishaholic rig. And uh, if you're a first time viewer, my name is Rich and this is my uh, 24 foot uh, Fishmaster Center console. And uh, this here on the bow is my 36 volt uh, electric Minn Kota Ultera. And to power that, I had three of these Optima 55 amp hour batteries to run that electric motor. But huge shout out to EnjoyBot for uh, hooking me up and sending me out three of these lithium ion phosphate 12 volt 100 amp hour batteries and uh the optima battery i believe is like 44 to 45 pounds so it's a pretty heavy lead acid battery and it's only 55 amp hours whereas the enjoybot 12 volt 100 amp hour is a little under 24 pounds so uh, I believe um, by putting in three of the EnjoyBot lithium ion phosphate uh, batteries and taking out the three uh, lead acid batteries, we're gonna be like saving like 60 pounds or so, which is awesome. And we're also gonna have a lot more long lasting power. And that's why for a long time I've wanted to upgrade to uh, lithium ion. And uh, I've actually already installed two of these in the center console. And being that these batteries are slightly bigger than uh, the three uh, lead acid that I had, I had to get a little crafty and uh, we're actually gonna install the third one now. And I'm gonna put it in the live well that's ahead of uh, the like inside um, battery or electrical uh, compartment area in the console. And I think it'll be a good spot for it. And uh, once we throw it in, then uh, I'll pick things up tomorrow uh, and we're gonna fish all day with these new batteries and uh, see how they perform and then give you my final review uh, at the end of the day. But uh, yeah, let's drop the battery in. So on the bottom of the well here, I put a MegaWare battery guard, which is supposed to help this battery from shifting around and vibrating because it like kind of is like a piece of rubber that sticks to the battery and the, the ground. So see how like I'm pushing it around and it's just sitting in one spot. And now we just gotta connect our positive and negative. All right, now that the battery's installed, we just drop down the cover that uh, goes over the well. And uh, this is actually a very dry compartment. I've already uh, taken a look in there many times after we've had some really big uh, Florida storms. And I'm talking like ponds of water uh, surrounding the boat. And uh, that's actually stayed relatively dry. And there's also a cover that I have here that goes over the console. So I think the battery will be good in uh, that spot there. And now we just have to see if uh, the Minn Kota powers on, and she does. So uh, we're good to go fishing tomorrow. I will see you guys out on the water bright and early, and I'm planning on fishing from sun up to sundown. So uh, I'm gonna be exhausted, but hopefully it's worth it, and we can really test out these batteries, and uh, of course, most importantly, catch some fish. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. It's bright and early the next morning, just uh, launched the boat. And uh, I think first order of business is uh, to head out a little bit and uh, see if we can catch some baits. Let's test out uh, the Minn Kota with uh, the new batteries. Well, it deploys, which is good. Now uh, I'm just gonna head up into this little cove and see if there's any mullet. <sighs> ah, terrible toss.
<laughs> but there was a lot of bait there, so I got some. Perfect little finger mullets. All right, check it out. Big fish candy. Got like uh, seven or eight baits, it looks like. All right, well, I thought I was recording, but uh, I just tossed the net again and uh, got a bunch of these little baits, which uh, aren't much, but I think they'll be perfect for uh, catching some mangrove snapper. So we'll catch ourselves a little dinner for later. All right, well, I got a ton of finger mullet right here, but unfortunately, it's too shallow for me to use the electric motor. So I'm getting out of the boat and I'm gonna creep up on these mullet. Oh, I think I just loaded the boat with that toss. Oh yeah. We are loaded up and whoa, these are mullets. Look at them, they're all pinfish. Crazy. Mostly like four or five inch pinfish. Oh, that's awesome. All right, check out all those pins. There's at least uh, 10 or 12 in here. And they're great size too. Like a big snook or big jack of all, a tarpon is gonna smash that. Got a bunch more mullets, slightly larger ones too, which is good. All right, well, I think we're good on bait. I'm just gonna push us out of the shallows here, hop in, and uh, we're gonna fire up the big engine and head down uh, south uh, on the Indian River towards uh, St. Lucie Inlet. to our first spot on spot lock here and uh by the way check out uh, these cool shoes that i gifted myself for my birthday uh that i got on amazon they're originally like 90 bucks but uh they were like 40 dollars and uh, they're like a columbia water shoe but they kind of like have like a running shoe vibe and i've been a runner all my life uh, and i have flat feet unfortunately so i got these because uh i figured i'd be able to be more comfortable all day uh, on the water, uh, especially on the boat when I'm standing most of the time. Uh, I'll be a lot more comfortable in these than say uh, my deck boots, which uh, by the end of the day, wearing my deck boots all day, my knees and feet start to hurt a lot. But uh, yeah, I'll put the link down in the description if you guys wanna check them out. Uh, I don't work with Columbia in any way. I just think that they're really cool and I love my new shoes. But uh, yeah, let's uh, rig up and uh, drop a bait down. Let's catch some fish. All right, I gotta rig up a whole new rig. 
to start uh, the day. So I got some of this uh, 50 pound inshore cigar fluorocarbon. I'm gonna cut off this old leader that's real short. You know what, I'm gonna use a barrel swivel today. So I'm gonna Palmar not on this, uh, I believe 50 or 75 pound barrel swivel. Me personally, I always prefer when tying direct with braid to use uh, a polymer knot or uh, a double clinch knot will work as well. I just always like to have at least uh, two holds on uh, either the eye of the hook or the eye of the swivel. Now let's probably pull off like six to seven feet of this 50 pound fluoro. The tide's coming in right now, so this water looks kind of clear right here. And uh, it's the very end of the incoming. So uh, I'll probably fish here until the tide goes slack if uh, we end up catching some fish here and doing well. Otherwise, I'll uh, <laughs> leave really quick if we don't get anything within the first like 10-15 minutes and I'll go to another spot before the tide is over. And then with my fluoro I'm just single uni knotting on the other end of the barrel swivel. And being that it looks like we've got quite a bit of current here today, I'm gonna add a little bit of weight to start. So I'm gonna thread this uh, half ounce egg sinker right up the line and uh, this is kind of like a knocker rig. Uh, is what uh, they call it and with my 5 aught or 4 aught um, trocar circle hook I'm just going to do another single uni knot and by the way comment down below if you guys like when I you know show my rigging and stuff like that if not then you know let me know too and then I'll stop doing it as much Let's try a pinfish to start. Okay. Alright, let's see if anything eats the pinfish. There should be snook of all sizes here. Oh my gosh, look at that snook blitz, snook blitz. Oh, oh, oh. Well, that was insane. There's definitely snook here. Oh, my pinfish is getting nervous. Something may have eaten them. There he is. Fish on. Ah, oh, something that pulled me into the rocks and uh, there goes the rig. Dang. Could have been a more eel. I've caught him off this jetty before. Hmm. All right, I rigged back up. And uh, I put on a fresh leader, but uh, this time I'm not gonna add any weight. I'm just gonna throw this pinfish out there weightless and see if that helps us get a bite. Oh, I think I just got eight. Oh man. I think we got like another eel or something. Nope. Got him out, whatever it is. Doesn't feel like a snook. Oh, one of these little uh, sand sharks. All 
Oh, you just cut the line right above the hook. That's the cast now. We're gonna hook up on a nice snook. Oh, my bait's getting super nervous. Come on, come on, come on. Eat the pinfish, eat the pinfish. Oh, just got eight. You see that bite? Pretty cool. There he is. Oh, it's a big snook, giant snook. He just erupted from the water. Wow. Woo! Now can we just get it in the boat? Oh, monster, look at that. Wow, she's not done yet. Still got to uh, tire out her out enough so I can pull her up this current into the net. But I think the worst is over being that I got her most of the way away from the jetty. Oh no, but she's going back. She's trying to find those rocks. Wow. Wow. She knows how to use that current. I had to take the electric off spot lock, so I'm drifting back towards her because I couldn't uh, pull her you know, hard enough up current without thinking that we might uh, break the leader. Here she is, here she is. No, there she goes, there she goes. She was right below the boat. Come on, baby, I'm gonna let you go. Oh, look at that dinosaur right there. Nice. Oh, what a way to start the day, baby. Woo, look at the size of that snook. All right, on the pinfish, baby. Let's get this big mama up on the bump board. And she is just about touching 38. There she goes. All right, well, now we gotta beat a 38 incher for the rest of the day. <laughs> Can we get a 40? I mean, if we get a 38 on our first one, uh, I think there's a chance we possibly could, or maybe even over 40. So um, yeah, let's get back out there. Oh wow, they're blitzing again along the rocks. Oh my God, check that out, check it out, they're blitzing. They're blitzing, look at that, look at that. Oh my God, they're flying out of the water. <laughs> let's get another bait out there. Look at this little bite size morsel. Oh, he's done. He is done. Oh, I got eight. There he is. Fish on. Oh my God, that was an overslot that just flew out of the water. And wow, look at this little dinker I just caught. <laughs> oh my gosh. Crazy. I just caught uh, the grandson, or the great, great, great grandson of that last fish.
All right, that's the perfect cast. Hopefully there'll be another big fish sitting right in that same spot. There he is. That feels a little better than that second one. Oh, not much better. See you. All right, well, we've lost the current, so we've lost the bite. Now, uh, let's try dropping some little baits on the rocks here, see if we can get some snapper. All right, so to catch the snapper, I've got a uh, 7.6 Dark Matter Fishaholic Inshore Series spinning rod and a 30 pound fluorocarbon leader. A little 4,000 dial Worcester Tate that has a 10 pound braid on it. And I'm just gonna tie on this little hook like that. Being that we have no current, I'm just gonna add a really small little split shot. And I'll load up this hook with two of these little baits. Oh yeah, snapper candy. There's one. Oh, no way. We got a moonfish or look down fish. These guys are actually really good eating. So I'm gonna throw them in the cooler. Fish on. That's a little snapper. Mangroves have to be 10 inches to keep. This one probably won't make it. Good to see they're here though. Oh, there's a good fish. Wow. This is a snapper. <laughs> no way, this is a snapper. Oh man. Could we have a grouper here or something? I don't know. Oh, it's a nice snook. Oh my gosh, there's a big cuda right behind him. Look at this. Oh my God. Monster cuda took a bite out of him. And uh, I can't believe this snook ate two little dead baits. Let's get this guy back quick. Hopefully the cuda doesn't find him. Since we saw that cuda, I do have a little wire leader right here. And I wanna try live line in a mullet, I guess just right behind the boat. Maybe we'll hook up on that big cuda. That cuda is probably still close by, so I'm not gonna put him out that far. Let's put the clicker on and let the rod sit in the holder and if we get a bite we'll hear this drag zinging out fish on this might be a keep a snapper oh yeah it's gonna be close mangrove snapper are extremely delicious and all they have to be is 10 inches to keep this is 11 inches so we got a nice fish to eat for dinner all right well i bled this guy quick it was amazing how quick uh, they change colors too let's 
get a few more baits on this structure. Maybe we'll get lucky and catch like three or four of those little mangroves. Oh, I'm seeing some big snook cruising right below me here. And uh, I'm noticing we're starting to get some outgoing current already. So uh, I'm probably gonna give this uh, a few more minutes and then maybe we'll try to see if we can get uh, some more snook here. Oh, that was a hard thump. Oh, there's another mangrove. That's a fat one. Oh yeah, another 11 incher. My mullet's jumping out of the water. Oh, there's a big fish underneath him. Did he get him? He did not get them. Oh my gosh, right there. That was insane. Big Cuda. I'm gonna try and like hand feed this Cuda. Oh man. Oh, the Cuda wants him, but he's turning. There he is. He ate it. Oh, maybe he dropped it. No, I think he has it. I'm gonna let him eat it for a while before coming tight. There he is. Got him. Yeah. That was sick. I was like feeding the dog at home. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> Got him. Giant Cuda. Pretty cool to be going from catching these guys to this. Let's get a measure on this big Cuda. Just about touching 42 inches. All right, well that was a pretty sweet bycatch and uh, we just fished for like another 20, 30 minutes for snapper and uh, caught a bunch of like borderline keepers, which I threw over and uh, a lot more shorts and this cool little like yellow striped fish. But uh, now I'm getting hungry. So it's time for us to have a bite because I made this uh, buffalo chicken, pepper jack and dill pickle wrap with some check mix, Chex mix. <laughs> so, I'm gonna get rid of my hunger, and then I think we're gonna try for like 10, 15 minutes here, still along this jetty um, for a snook again. And uh, if we can't get them here, then maybe move out uh, to another spot or into another spot. And I think we'll, you know, wherever we go, where we possibly will catch, um, you know, some more snook, we'll also have another shot at some more snappers. So uh, we're allowed five to make a limit of mangrove snappers. So we got two. So I'm hoping we can get three more. So yeah. All right, while we're eating lunch, we might as well throw out a bait behind the boat. I added a weight to our rig now because uh, I want to try fishing the deeper water. Oh, just got eight. Big fish. Oh gosh, my drag. Somehow we still have this fish on. I forgot to tighten my drag down. <laughs> this ain't no snook. 
Oh, it's another one of those uh, little nurse sharks, sand sharks. All right, well, I know some of you are probably not gonna like how I released that shark, but uh, this is, these are some of the factors that you gotta consider. Uh, one, I did not plan on catching any sharks today, so uh, my long uh, D hooker that I use for sharks, uh, I didn't bring on board. Two, I didn't want to get close to that shark because I've never caught that shark before. I'm not entirely sure um, if um, you know they've got a lot of teeth or you know whatever. They probably have a strong bite of some sort. I, I don't want to lose a finger. <laughs> and three, uh, you know that hook will probably rust out in a week or two. So uh, rather than me, uh, you know, toying with that fish, trying to get the hook out with these uh, short little stubby pliers. Um, I might as well just cut the line, let them swim, and uh, you know the hook will come out, and uh, we'll now get on another bait, and we'll get back in there and hopefully catch you know something more desirable like that big snook we caught. And uh, to the west, uh, we've got some rain, and to the south, we've also got some rain now, and, and I'm hearing thunder over there, and uh, it's starting to rain now here. <laughs> but uh, to the south, it looks like it's downpouring, and same to the west, it looks like it's really downpouring. So uh, if it's just drizzling here, it's fine, and I got the rain gear, and we'll you know, hang out and, and if it gets bad, then I might have to run in and uh, maybe we'll find like a bridge if, uh, you know, it gets real bad out here. But yeah, let's get another bait out there. Hey, what's happening? Thanks, man. You catch anything? Oh, nice. Well, that was cool. I was a fan of the channel and uh, he said he was out there getting some amberjacks. We'll have to give that a try one of these days. I've caught small ones. I'd like to get some of the big uh, amber jacks. And uh, you know, this rain actually feels good. It's so hot out here. Uh, this rain is gonna cool me off a little bit. But if it starts like coming down, like I'm in the shower, then I'll have to uh, put on the rain gear. Oh, just got thumped. There he is. Fish on. On the pinfish. Woo, what? <laughs> this guy is going crazy. All right, well, uh, it rained on us hard for like five, 10 minutes, and then uh, the sun came back out and it's uh, really hot because I got the full uh, suit on. But uh, as you can see, and here, that was, that was a big crack of thunder, like, over the clear part of the sky, but like back there, it's like black, which is crazy. We're gonna head a little bit further out where we've got clear sky, and uh, hopefully this storm passes, and hopefully we can find some more fish willing to bite. So I'll see you at the next spot. see if we can get something here right back in this area I side scanned a ton of fish stacked up here all right nothing on the pinfish that I dropped down first when we got here so I'm gonna try a little finger mullet now oh check this out lots of marks right here those look like all snook too oh I got eight on the mullet there he is. Fish on. Whoa. This fish is ripping. All right, nice little fun size snook. Kind of like the size of the last one. I'm gonna try throwing out this rod for a snapper. Fish on. Nice. A little bit better snapper right there. Definitely a keeper. A little shy of uh, 13 inches. Oh, 
Oh, that one hammered it. Nice. This one is about 11 and a half. All right, let's see if we can get one more snapper to make a limit. And let's check on our mullet here. He's still swimming around fine. Oh, kind of cool. Look, at there's a ton of look down fish right here. Watch this. Fish on. This one's real small compared to the first one we caught that I kept. So I'll probably just throw this guy back. But they are extremely tasty. Cool. I got a snook. I thought this was gonna be uh, our last keeper snapper. And uh, another snook ate the dead bait. It's crazy. Insane. There is like. 20 snook here and I can't get a bite on the live bait but the dead bait this one crushed oh another snook god dang The snook don't seem to want to let me catch my final mangrove snapper keeper. Wow, look at the screen. Those are all just stacks of snook. Oh man, and I just got a bite. Well, that's got to be a keeper snapper. This little guy just about makes 10 inches. There's a fish. Sweet. All right, well, we're gonna head out of this spot. I was hoping uh, the last mangrove we would catch would be uh, a little bit bigger. But uh, at least we got a limit, and uh, I kept that last one that was just the keeper because uh, we're all out of uh, the little greenies, which I was using for bait to catch the uh, mangrove snappers. So uh, now we're, I think, getting towards the end of the outgoing tide. It's uh, about 3.40 p.m. So uh, we're almost done with the day, but uh, still got some good fishing time left, and I think we'll be able to grind it out and uh, maybe if we're lucky find like one or two more big fish and this spot here was stacked with a ton of snook but uh, they just seem to be really finicky uh, you know it paid off uh, putting on a longer leader towards the end and we got uh, one with uh, Rodney Holder uh, just dead stick in it but um, I think we should head back to that first spot where we got the 38 incher and the Cuda earlier and uh, we'll give it like 15 20 minutes there uh, unless we start whacking them and stay longer but uh, if not then we'll head further up inside uh, and uh, see if we can hit some other spots for uh, some more fish and uh, finally now it looks much clear, clear uh, clearer up in there so uh, I think uh, we should be good on uh, not having any more storms uh, throughout, throughout the rest of the day or I'll keep my fingers crossed uh, hopefully we don't have any more storms but uh, yeah let's head to the first spot where we were at earlier All right, so I switched back to a pinfish for this spot here because I'm hoping maybe we'll find another upper slot to eat the pinfish here. Oh, got eight. Something small though, oh, a little Jack Creval. Better than nothing. Surprised we didn't catch more of these uh, actually today so far.
All right, I think I'm down to my last pinfish. So after this guy, I'm gonna have to go uh, try and catch some more bait. Look how dark that sky is back west there. And I've been seeing quite a bit of lightning too. So, uh, I mean, hopefully we can catch some bait just around this area and uh, kind of stay in this area because it seems like this is like the nicest, uh, you know, we don't have any storms directly over our head. Oh, just got eight. Did you see that lightning? That was crazy. Oh, something big here. Oh my gosh. What do we have here? Oh, I hope it's not a shark. It hasn't jumped yet. Could be a Jack Creval. If it is, it's uh, gonna be a good size one. Crush the pinfish. Heck yeah. Oh, I can barely move this fish. It's heavy, real heavy. This might be a shark. Yeah, it's not a snook. And if it was a Jack Creval, it would have kept going. Oh my gosh. This fish is flying. I'm gonna try to chase it down a little bit with the electric motor. Now we're really putting uh, the new batteries to the test. I got this thing on full speed 10. This is a shark, I can't believe that it hasn't cut me off yet. All right, I got him straight up and down. Just gotta pull him high enough to see what it is. And I feel like I'm pulling the cork out of the ocean right now. So I bet you this might not even be a shark. It could be a, uh, a uh, manta ray or stingray. It's something weird. Oh, there's the leader. Oh yeah, it's a shark. How in the hell has he not cut us off? Oh, it broke right there. Well, that was a workout. And uh, unfortunately now we are out of bait. So uh, I kind of want to go to another spot, but I, I think we should take like 15 or 20 minutes uh, right here throwing an artificial, see if we get anything, and then head in and hit a couple other spots with lures, uh, or see if we can find some more bait, catch bait, and then uh, you know keep on fishing. Because uh, we still got uh, some decent filmable daylight left, and I really want to fish until the sun uh, sets. Uh, so let's uh, tie on a lure and uh, start plugging away. All right, I think we should try this Rapala here. So I'm just gonna jerk, jerk, pause this Rapala all the way back out to the boat. Oh, just got a bite. Oh, another bite. Oh, there's a fish. I think we got a little Jack Creval.
Now this is a shark bait. Like, why did that shark have to eat my last pinfish, which I was anticipating a big snook to eat? There's one. Oh, gosh. This might be a decent fish. Oh, he side hooked. This little guy felt much bigger. Got a big one? Oh, Kubera? No way. By the way, this is uh, A Ben's, uh, my buddy Aaron. Uh, you gotta hold it up. Or let me swing by you. Got it on a Mahara? Eight pound, yeah. Nice. All right, let's drop down. That was pretty sick. Uh, by the way, check out A Ben's fishing on YouTube if uh, you haven't already. He makes some sick local content in this area and uh, absolutely slays. It'd be cool if we can get a Cabero now. <laughs> Probably won't happen, but uh, you never know. Oh, she might have just got a bump there. Oh, there's a fish. Fish on. Ripping. What could this be? Doesn't feel like a snook. Oh, it is. Haha, <laughs> yeah. Nice. Woo! Jumped in the net. We don't need no bait. All right, well, I think we're gonna wrap things up after that last one. I am fished out and uh, we did do one more drift and I had one more bite and the fish came off and I'm okay with that. <laughs> but uh, the sun is starting to set and I am starving and uh, yeah, we're gonna head back to the launch, fillet up our fish and uh, cook ourselves up a really good snapper dinner and probably save some uh, for the weekend. And today we really did push our new batteries uh, to the limits and uh, tested them out. And uh, we pretty much used the trolling motor for like 11 or 11 and a half hours like straight. Uh, you know, I was using it like as soon as we, you know, we've been out here for 12 hours and uh, I started using it when we were fishing for bait, but I was, you know, turning it on, turning it off, turning it on, turning it off. Uh, but once we got to like where we were fishing, uh, that trolling motor was pretty much going like all day long. And I think we're around the new moon right now. And uh, the current has been racing in and out and uh, now in like all day long. And uh, I'm impressed that we were able to stay spot locked all day and on the spot and catch a lot of fish. And uh, you know, I can't complain. And that's why I am fished out. But uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, please smash that like button, hit the subscribe button to stay tuned for more. And until the next video, live to fish, fish to live.